once you have um, prepared your file, you can navigate to the flood data reduction website and start analyzing your data. So if you're new, on the left there's a, there's a navigation pane and there's also a new small pane which directs you to the tools and instructions and you can go here. Um, you can download a test data set, it's currently not working, so it will be rectified soon. And then there are some sub-menus, for example there's videos, and you can go to the videos and it shows you how to prepare your data file, how to um, find a peak position on the microprobe, um, this file here, and so on. And once you're happy with it, and there's text material and others, this will be filled over time. Then you can go back to the starting point. Click on Browse Files, select a file, upload it. It will do a couple of tests. For example, if um, standard names are duplicates, which is not allowed, otherwise this is a problem. Um, check for preparing um, or ch check the, the video on how to name the points when you should do this um, during measurement, of course. And now you see in the data you uploaded here. Um, you can navigate through it, you can um, make it bigger, so it's the entire screen, so you can look at all your data, you can um, sort it um, um, by a certain column and so on. So once you're happy with this, go to data reduction. And again, here's instruction for this um, particular site here. Then go to data reduction. Now you can either choose all data or only the inspector data. So these are those in the second column. So if this is your data here, for example, um, Then here's your inspected column, and the inspected column, maybe maybe there's a problem with one sample. Say there's a problem with this sample, and you don't want to include this in your analysis. Then you can simply rename this don't, um, with whatever, um, don't use, for example, and this is it. Of course, you need to save it, and again, and again, upload it. I'll briefly do this because I think just something changed in the background. Um, and then when you click here on inspected only, this one will be treated as a separate sample. So you will get the result for all these samples, but also for this sample here. So this is the, the, the nice part of using uh, the inspected column. So let's for example use only the inspected ones. I click here and the so data are pre-processed now. Now you can select which standards you want to use. So this gives you the list of all the standards that you measured and maybe you don't want to have this one but it's done Knolle and it's fine. Then you can select which drift monitor you used. Um, so let's say you use this one, then you can calculate the results. And basically, we are done now. I will close this so there's a little bit more um, space. So this is the result now. So here are the standards that you used for fitting. These are basically these standards up here. And you can change these easily by adding one, for example, calculate the results again, so you need to click these, it says it's successfully reduced, and now you have five in this list here. Here to calculate fit parameters, this is just for information, that these are the formulas used to calculate iron 2 and 3 plus. Then go to the left and on results tables, and here you get all the tables, so this is just really to, to check these, so this is the iron 3 plus in the standards, um, and here's the iron concentration in mass power, here's the um, mass power, determined mass power, tab 2, um, and, and tab 4, and this is the difference between the mass power determined and 
uh, what you measure basically. So you can see here, if you go down in the standard, there's quite some difference here. So apparently there's maybe something not entirely, I know, yes. So this is the difference, so it's quite small, um, what you should expect. So this is the same for the drift monitor. And this is the samples, and you can download each one of these as a CSV file, should you want to, but there's finally an output file down here, which you might want to um, uh, use then in their visualization. So now this is actually to go through, well, I just showed this, um, your data sheet, and basically maybe you want to remove a couple of individual analysis, and the visualizations help you to do this. Um, so now here a couple of um, sub menus and you can go through all of this. So this is a drift inspection so you can just have a look how your drift monitor looks like for the various elements and um, for example iron might be interesting so this looks quite good. So the well, standard deviation is only 0.51. You can also check on how the um, iron 3 plus calculate from tab 2 and tab 4 compared to each other. Ideally, this should more or less plot on a slope 1 line, I guess. And you can go to comparing L alpha and L beta. This is really just to have a, some impression. I'm going into detail here, this should be more or less self-explanatory. Um, if not, there is um, instructions for the site. There's information about L alpha, L beta, well, it's not that helpful in this case, but in general, you find something. And there's parametrization. So this is basically the plot. That is, so these are the formulas that are plotted here. These lines and these lines represent um, iron 3 plus in the sample. So this is 0 iron 3 plus. And by the way, you can use these tools here to, for example, um, resize the entire plot a little bit can uh, paint on the plot and so on um, and you can reset it you can even save it if you want to um, yeah so you have a, some idea here whether this is all this looks fine or whether there's a problem so sometimes if the um, standards are completely off one is completely off then this might look entirely weird you can go to sample inspection. Oh, this is quite a complex pane here. Um, so now you selected one element and all samples are displayed. And you see really all the samples you measured. And there's already an indication that um, the, the green means it looks fine, the orange means it doesn't look fine. So I changed these samples a little bit. So, this, so there's also some, some orange things here. But So this is how you can, can go through your sounds and very quickly have an impression whether this all looks good or whether there's a problem. And if you want um, only two columns if on a smaller screen, then you can have also two columns. And again, um, this can be sized, so now uh, everything's on one page and so on. Okay, then there's the possibility to select only one sample and get all the elements. Yeah, again, you can increase the number of columns here. And now you see all the elements. So here you see chromium, silicon, titanium, potassium, and not only the elements, but also, for example, the counts of L-beta, um, the, um, the ratio of L-beta divided by L-alpha, uh, the current, and so on. So you get some impression about your, your data and Using this tool, you can then, in your original file, delete or indicate in this inspected column um, if there's a problem with some of your analysis, you can change this in this original file and then upload it again for analysis. And then in the end, you can choose individual ones to have a really high granular inspection possibility, select one of your samples, select just one element, and you can then also go on to individual points and you will see that, for example, if you think this is wrong, then you get some, some better idea about this one here. So once you're done with this, you can move on to error considerations. 
And this just shows you how the iron 3 plus changes when iron total and the ratio of L beta to L alpha change. So this is absolute deviation of iron 3 plus. Um, so these are the various samples and so the, the one standard deviation is in the range of 0.01 here. Um, if well, if um, in this case iron uh, iron total would change by one or two percent. And um, this is for again all the samples. Oh, sorry, and this is when this is how much the iron three plus changes if the iron um, has an, uh, is different by is wrong by one percent or by two percent. And this is how the n three plus changes if the L beta divided by L alpha changes by one or by two percent. Now this is the one standard deviation in the sample. So this is just calculated what's this one standard deviation. So this is usually 0 0.01 in the samples and in the drift monitor. So this is quite similar, which um, is not too bad actually. So once this is all done, to move on here on the left, if you want to have some idea about how, um, about the influence of the, of the fit parameters or um, the iron total or the beta to alpha, you can do this here. So this automatically loads up your parameters that were calculated and then you can change these or you can just change the iron total maybe by 1% so this would be the 20 or you should first calculate it. So this is 1.613 now I change the iron total by um, by 10% this would be 20 calculate again and you see how much this, so this changes by by triples, almost triples, but this is an error of 10%. So you can also get some idea here. And then you can go to the output. This is something that will come soon. So basically, just you can inspect it and basically just can click and everything will be exported in a nice file for further working with it. That's it. Thanks.